Was it a cyber attack? Was it a solar flare? Was it something that was a test run for a plan in the future? Many people are still scratching their heads about the massive AT&T outage that happened just a few days ago. Some think they have it all figured out. But there's a part of the story that nobody wants to talk about, the real truth. Many have speculated over the years what could cause something like this, but nobody asks the question, what if there were nobody to go in, fix it, and turn the lights back on? If it was just as simple as having the knowledge, having the training to go flip this switch and fix this electrical part or this substation, wouldn't you think more people would want that knowledge? What if there weren't enough people to do it, though? You see, that's the real story that nobody wants to talk about. And what got me thinking about this was this story coming out of the U.S. Army today. U.S. Army cutting force by 24,000 amid recruiting shortfalls. The Army says 5% of Army jobs slashed are mainly in positions that are already empty, meaning 95% are not. Now, over the last year or two, many have forgotten that the U.S. Army went through this whole rigmarole to redo its physical fitness assessment. Um, They used to call it the uh, APFT, now it's the uh, ACFT. However they want to look at it, why would they bother at this point? If they were continuing to believe that they were going to regrow the force and put together a new cutting-edge force where they need all these new jobs, but then all of a sudden now say, that's it, we're throwing in the towel? You see, this is the, the story that is the root of all other stories out there right now, especially the one about the border. Real quick, though, as always, we're going to get into this in detail. And fair warning, in this video later on, hopefully way past when the censors care, got a few images I'm going to show, but they are going to be for adults but they have a point and we have a great glaring example on the other side of the planet to show what happens when those who want to build a giant wall across our southern border they get their way well be careful what you wish for it's already been foretold in science fiction and it's already happening now in another country real quick though as always, thank you, all of you who join us over at Patreon, one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked, $5 level as well, wish I didn't have to, to be very honest, wish I didn't have to, this channel did just fine for quite a few years without there having to be any type of an interest in that, but right now, to tell the truth, to take the gloves off, to say what needs to be said, you've got to do it over there, and believe me, this story while they try to censor it because they believe it's salacious, it really isn't. It's the truth undercutting all other stories. There's a problem. Now, I had mentioned in sci-fi that this had been covered. Who remembers the series Colony from way back three seasons? I believe it was uh, 16, 17, and 18. Those three years, uh, Carlton Cuse, it's you know pretty uh, mundane. It starts off with just... Aliens arrive and they drop down these huge walls and they section off people and they're using them for some nefarious purpose. Well, in the series, when you kind of look through the the main storyline, there's a subtext to it. They wonder what's what's going to become of us. What's going to if we stay inside this wall, what's on the other side of that wall? Well, people knew they just couldn't get there. But a couple of kids found a way under the wall and they happened upon this huge warehouse full of goods that everybody inside the wall would need. But there was nobody there. It was like it had just been left. Somebody just was in the middle of a a job or a shift and just got up and walked away. And so they helped themselves. They fill up their backpacks and they bring these things back under the wall. And of course, they help contribute to the, the black market. Now, by itself, it's a very small part of the storyline. But what if there were nobody to run the pallet jacks? Nobody to load the trucks. Nobody to maintain the electrical system, maintain the plumbing system. We covered this in an earlier video a few days ago about specifically the sewer system. 
You see, here in America, we're running out of people that can do jobs. They're getting older, and not only are there not younger folks willing to replace them, there's just not enough of them even if there were. Amid hiring boom, defense firms say labor shortage is dragging them down. For them, they were saying in this article, the best thing that could happen would be a major slowdown in the U.S. economy. You see, this is something that people look at and go, oh, it's going to be the end of America, end of America, end of America. If we don't have this, it'll be the end of America as well. We don't have enough people. You want, you want proof? One of the most stringent immigration countries in the entire world is Japan. You can be forcibly detained in solitary confinement indefinitely just for overstaying your visa. If you go to Japan on a work visa and you overstay, you might as well be a murderer because they can pick you up without a judge's order, without any court intervening, and they can put you in solitary confinement until they get around to dealing with you. They will literally remove you from society. Japan, but what's the, what the, what's the result? Japan to take unprecedented steps to cope with record low birth rate as demographic woes deepen. They're just not making enough babies. It's just that simple. And without any immigration to make up for the shortfall or incredibly strict immigration laws, they're collapsing. And this is all over. This is Reuters. Japan's new birth, births fall to record low in 2023 is demographic woes. Colla I mean, it's, it's way down there. And I'll give you this link to immigration in Japan where you can read what they do to guest workers who overstay by a day, a week, a month. All of you Americans out there think this is such a great idea. To, to become like Japan. I found this and I thought it was kind of a, a lighter way of relating this about uh, old time values. Grandma, everything is so sexualized these days. Also, Grandma, 11 kids. I think here, 3, 6, 9, 12, 14. Sometimes they had that many too, 14. People think well, the stork brought them or they just hatched from eggs. See, that's not the case. I used a thumbnail as a uh, an image over at the Patreon channel, and a lot of people were like, why did you use that image? It's, it was this. Because there's only a couple of groups of people right now that are engaging in activities that are replacing the birth rate. And funny story, it goes along with another story. Sylvester Stallone just announced that he's making a permanent move to Florida, and Casey DeSantis, the uh, first lady, decided to congratulate him. But he has been one of these guys that has been taken to task because he's in a relationship with a much younger woman. But they've got three kids. See, they've exceeded the replacement rate. And when you look at a lot of what they call May-December couples like this, they all have two, three, sometimes four kids. They have three daughters. Nine celebrity couples who don't care about their age gap. There's one down here. I want to share this with you. And it dovetails with yet even another story we talked about. It's Celine Dion. Now, her uh, her husband has passed. But I want to uh, share something with you that I think a lot of people don't know that would probably bother a lot of folks, but used to be very common. This was Celine Dion. She got married to, I, I want to get this name right, Renee An Angelil. Angelil, they were um, together since 1988, 28 years, 26-year age gap. It was a lifelong love story. Now sit down, folks. Sit down. They first met in 1980 when she was 12 and he was 38. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe she's French. And at that time, in 1980, that was the age at which you could consent in France, if I am remembering right, because they've just recently changed that. 12 and 38, they started dating eight years later. So 20 and 46, and got married in 1994, which would have been 14 years later. So she was 26. And they had, a, a couple had a, had a baby, Renee, Charles, Angelo, 
And in 2010, 2010, pardon me, Celine gave birth to twins, Eddie and Nelson. So that's three. You know, they got Beyonce and and Jay-Z. They got all of them. But the point is, the the point is, there's another story here about um, a woman that didn't accidentally give birth. She didn't know she was having triplets. Her and her husband had three African-American triplets. And a lot of people would look at this and go, "Um, excuse me, uh, Mr. Maquis, there's a problem here. Children are children, are they not? No matter where they came from. Children are children, are they not? No matter where they came from. I don't think many years ago people would say, you know, we need to model ourselves after Japan, but right now that's exactly what we're doing. And Japan's swirling the bowl right now. With Without massive immigration right now, they would, uh, they're, they're going to cease to be as will we. There won't be anything left. And the final thing I'll say about this is, I know a lot of people don't think this is important, but it undercuts every other story out there. We were all supposed to be outraged by Prince Andrew and his quote-unquote child 20-year-old, you know, friend that was somehow evidence of something going wrong over on a little St. James Island. But when folks came here to this country and left Europe, a lot of people think it was just English. And there's a lot of folks that use the blanket term white. Well, guess what? It wasn't the case. There were English, there were Irish, there were Scottish, there were Italians, there were from Spain, Castilian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Germans, Dutch, and they didn't consider themselves all white. They, they were very distinct cultures that intermixed and intermingled. Those are all different countries. You might be able to make the argument about maybe Germany and Austria not being um, so different or the, the, um, the Slavic countries, uh, Finland, Sweden, and uh, all those. But believe me, the, the Spanish and the Italians and the Irish and they did not get along. They, they did not see themselves as white, quote-unquote, white people. They were all very distinct and very intermixed. And, and many were, were not about it. Many people were very much against it. In fact, which ones? Was, the, was it the Irish and the Italians? I believe it was. It was the Irish and the Italians that didn't want to have anything to do with each other. Now, when you talk to folks who have are what they call people of color today, they'd be like, well, why did they care? They're all just quote-unquote white people. Well, not at that time they weren't. And what made this country grow and thrive was making babies. And everybody made babies with everybody else. And it's something that you know bothers a lot of folks, but I still think this is hilarious. Because you'd have to ask grandma, great grandma, some questions about, you know, what was their what was their pastime? You know, what were what were they what did you do? You know, there was no internet, you know, there were no movie theaters back then. You know, there was uh, very few people had cars way back then. Gosh, what did you do to pass the time, grandma? Great grandma, great great grandma. Hmm. Maybe I'll ask Aunt Susan or Aunt Betty or Aunt Leah or Uncle Bob or Uncle Ron or Uncle Tom or get my point. See, this is the story that's, you know, underneath all other stories. And the fact that it's now it's weaseled its way all the way to the U.S. Army, that they're just deciding, oh, you know what? <laughs> These, those 24,000 jobs that we were desperate to fill, no, nah, they just don't exist anymore. Poof. Abracadabra. We're just going to pretend we don't need them. It's a shocking story, but not headlines anywhere. So I will leave it there. Let you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. God bless all of you that have joined us at Patreon. Sure appreciate it. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for each other. Lift each other up. God bless. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.